Okay, in this section 1-6, we're going to be talking about how to determine whether a function is even or odd. And we begin here this lesson today by having a discussion about uh, different types of symmetry. Um, because whether or not a function is even or odd is tied to the symmetry of the graph. All right, so um, let's talk about uh, symmetry with respect to the x-axis. Let's kind of review what it means. So in order to be symmetric with the y-axis, then really what that means is for your graph is whenever x, y is on the graph, then the point negative x, y is also on the graph, right? And so, like for example, if I look here at the uh, graph that we have here, the diagram, if x, y is on the graph, then negative x, y also has to be on the graph, right, for every point. Okay, so if that's the case, then the graph would be symmetrical through the y-axis like this. Okay? Another type of symmetry we want to discuss is uh, origin symmetry. So a graph is symmetrical with the origin if whenever x, y is on the graph, then so is the point negative x comma negative y. Okay, so let's look at and see what that means. So if the point x, y is on the graph, then so is the point negative x negative y. So you go in the completely the opposite direction in order to get that point on the graph. And if that's the case, then the graph has origin symmetry. Origin symmetry. Okay? And the third type of symmetry that's discussed is uh, or, uh, uh, symmetry through the x-axis. And so a graph has symmetry with respect to the x-axis if whenever x, y is on the graph, then so is the point x negative y. So again, looking at the diagram, if x is, uh, x, y is on the graph, then so is the point x negative y. And then that would give you uh, symmetry through the x-axis. All right, now, so when we're talking about even and odd functions, okay, so if the graph is symmetrical with respect to the y-axis, it is an even function. So if you've got the graph of the function and that graph is symmetrical through the y-axis, okay, then we know that that function is even. We know that that function is even. Okay. Now, if the graph is symmetrical with the origin, then it is an odd function. So any graph that you've got that's symmetrical with the origin, okay, then that would be an odd function. Now, keep in mind, with symmetrical to the y-axis, like this parabola is open up, opening up, you could also have one that opens down. That would also be symmetrical, and it'd be an even function. Likewise, um, right here, this uh, particular one is increasing on every interval through the origin, right? But you could also have one that kind of starts on this side and goes like this that would also be symmetrical through the origin, and it would also be an odd function. Keep that in mind. Okay, so if a graph is symmetrical to the x-axis, it's not a function. Why not? Well, if it's symmetrical to the x-axis, then that means you would have this x, the same x, going to two different y's. And of course we learned, like in the very first lesson, that that is not a function. It fails the vertical line test at many points. All right? So again, symmetrical through the y-axis, even function. Symmetrical through the origin, odd function. Okay, so the main thing we want to be able to do here now from this lesson is to determine whether a function is even or odd. First of all, Let's practice and see if we can determine whether a function's even or odd from the graph. So if they give us the graph, okay, it should be pretty easy to determine whether or not the graph is symmetrical through the y-axis or through the origin or neither. So like for example, on this first one, graph A, okay, we can take a look at the graph. Some of you may recognize that as the absolute value function. It is symmetrical through the y-axis. So um, just upon visual inspection, I'm going to call this an even function. Okay. Let's look at B. On this one, this one has symmetry through the origin. So since it has origin symmetry, we will call this an odd function. Okay. Here's the next one. This one is a parabola. However, the parabola, the vertex is not centered uh, on the y-axis. So since that's the case, this is not symmetrical through the y-axis. It'd be symmetrical through some other number. 
And so since it's not symmetrical through the y-axis, remember that means it must be the same on both sides. It must cut it in half. It, the y-axis does not, so it's not symmetrical through the y-axis. We're going to call this one uh, neither. And this one is centered on the y-axis. It is symmetrical through the y-axis, and that would make it an even function. All right, so uh, it should be easy to tell by looking at a graph, if they give you a graph, whether or not the function is even, odd, or neither. Okay? Now, if they don't give you a graph, you can graph it, or there's also a way to figure out the equation, whether it's an uh, even or odd function, algebraically. And here's the test for it. Okay, so now, a function is even when for each x in the domain of f, then f of negative x is equal to f of x. Okay, so let's slow down a little bit and make sure that we understand what that means. Okay, so it will be even if f of negative x and f of x are the same. In other words, if I put x into the function, and if I put negative x into the function, I get the same thing out. Then that would be, for every x, okay, then that would be an even function. So like, let's just do an example. Let's say I do f of 5, and f of 5 gives me 10, for example. All right? Now, let's say I put in f of negative 5, okay? and I also get 10. Okay, So remember, if I put in x and I put in negative x, and those two are equal to each other, so what did I get when I put in 5? Okay, So f of x equals 10. What did I get when I put in negative 5? f of negative x equals 10. So they're both 10, so if these two are equal to each other, 10 and 10, then you know you've got an even function. And of course, that has to happen for every x in the domain. It can't just happen for one. All right? It's got to happen for every x in the domain. So uh, we'll talk more about that here in a minute. But let me give you an example of what an odd function would look like when you plug something in. So let's say I plug in f of 5, and uh, I get 10 again. But this time, when I plug in f of negative 5, because this is a different function, when I plug in f of negative 5, I get negative 10. All right, so let's take a look at that. So remember, a function is odd when if uh, you take uh, f of negative x, that value, and that's equal to the negative of what f of x is. All right, so let's look at this. So f of negative x. Well, in this case, f of negative x was negative 10. Okay? Now, if the function is odd, that would be equal to the negative of f of x. Well, what was f of x? f of x was 10. All right, what's the negative of f of x? Negative 10. Notice that they're equal. So again, if f of negative x equals to the negative of f of x, then you've got an odd function. Okay? So that's the way to test it algebraically. All right? And remember, it must work for every x in the domain, not just 5 and negative 5. It has to work for every x. All right, So keep that in mind. So let me kind of show you how to test it algebraically when you have an equation. All right, So here I've got f of x equals to x to the third minus x. Okay, So we already know what f of x equals, right? Well, to test it, I need to know what f of negative x is equal to. So what I really want to find here is I want to find, or I'm saying f, this is g, g of negative x. I want to find what g of negative x is and compare it to g of x to see whether it's even or odd. So let's plug this in and see what f uh, or g of negative x is going to be equal to. So what does this mean? g of negative x, it means anywhere I see an x in the function, I'm going to replace it with negative x. So x to the third becomes negative x to the third. And then minus x becomes minus negative x. So remember, I'm plugging in negative x into my function, so anywhere I see an x, I'm going to take it out and put negative x in its place. 
Now once I simplify that, I'll be able to determine uh, whether they are the same or whether they are opposites of each other. So let's take a look and see. So g of x, or g of negative x now, will be equal to, so I need to figure out what negative x raised up to the third power is. Well, negative x times negative x times negative x is negative times a negative is a positive times a negative is back to a negative. And then x to the third power will also be behind that. So that's negative x to the third power. Negative and negative makes a positive here. That's plus x. Okay. And so now I've got it into uh, a position to where I can pretty much get close to determining whether this is even or odd. Okay. So to finish it off, I need to kind of see if I can put it into either this form or the negative of this form, right? Because remember, f of x and f of negative x is what I'm trying to compare here. Okay, so first of all, let's see if they're equal. So is g of x and g of negative x equal? Okay, uh, they are not equal, they are not the same, right? So that means it's not even, okay, it's not even. Um, now we need to determine whether it's odd or neither. Now in order to be odd, then f of negative x should be equal to the negative of f of x. Okay? It should be equal to the negative of f of x. So let's see if that's the case. Okay? And so if I did uh, the negative of f of x, then that would be negative x to the third plus x, which is exactly what we have here. So if I pull a negative out of this, okay, like so, then what I should notice is that f of x is equal to the negative of uh, f of uh, f of negative x is equal to the negative of f of x. So here's g of x, and it's equal to the negative of I said that wrong. Er, let me back up. Okay. This is g of negative x, and it's equal to the negative of g of x. Right. So that's how I know algebraically that this one is odd. Okay. So again, algebraically, to find out whether it's even or odd, plug in g of negative x, and then simplify it down. If they're the same, okay, it's even. If it's their opposites, then it's odd. If it's neither one of those two, then it's neither. Let's try b, see what we get. All right, so I need to plug in h of negative x and see what that evaluates to to compare them. So in place of x, I'm going to put negative x in its place. Negative x squared plus 1. Simplify it out. h of negative x is equal to, now negative x squared means negative x times negative x, which negative and negative would make a positive, and then that would be plus 1. All right, so let's compare h of x, right, and h of negative x. They are the same. So remember, if they're the same, then it must be an even function. So even is my answer here. Okay, so basically when you're testing these, okay, what you want to do is you want to put h of negative x in there, simplify it down, and compare the two. Compare what you get with h of negative x to the original. If they're the same, it's even. If they're opposite signs, then it's odd. All right? And if you come to a problem that you're not sure of, graph it on the calculator and then go to the graph and determine from the graph and ask yourself, OK, does it have y-axis symmetry? Even. Does it have origin symmetry? Odd. So if you're not sure if you've done it right, algebraically double check it by plugging this into the graph. Okay. All right, the last one. Let's take a look. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to plug in f of negative x in order to compare. And when I do, I've got negative x raised up to the third power minus 1. f of negative x equals negative x raised up to the third power is negative x to the third minus 1. All right. So I take a look at this. I take a look at the original. 
They're definitely not the same, so it's not even. And are they um, opposites of each other? In other words, um, uh, does this equal to the negative of this? Well, if I pull the negative out of here, that would be negative x third plus 1. And it should be minus 1. So this is actually not the negative of that uh, f of x. And so what that means is this one's neither. So this is not the negative of x to the third minus 1. So since it's not the negative of it, and it's not exactly the same as it, uh, the answer to this question would be neither. All right, so again, uh, make sure you take the skills that you learned and utilize those to answer the questions on your quiz where you will be determining uh, whether functions are even, odd, or neither.